In this video, I'm going to try to address a question from PMAC, who asked me, um, you know, do I have anything that deals with linking a Captivate project to other Captivate projects, each of which would have its own separate assessment. Uh, so PMAC, I'm going to try to address this question for you best I can. There's a few solutions. I'm going to show you one today, and uh, it's actually something that comes built in with Adobe Captivate, but it's something not a lot of people use, and nor is it something a lot of people are entirely aware of. And I'll just show it to you now. If you click your Start menu and go to All Your Applications, you'll find something called the Adobe Multiscope Packager. And there'll be, of course, a, a version for every version of Captivate you have installed. Um, if you click on that, that opens up this little guy here, and this allows you to package multiple published SCORM files into one SCORM file. And it uses something called SCOs. SCOs are basically the smallest unit of a SCORM file, if you will, uh, or the smallest version of a SCORM file. And there's simply, it's a, an acronym that stands for shareable content object. And uh, so I've actually gone ahead, let me delete this one here, I've actually gone ahead and created two mini modules on this very topic, and I've gone ahead and published them. Uh, if you want to see how to publish for an LMS, I have a video uh, which I'll put a link for uh, in this video, and you can, uh, you can take a look at that. So, there's a few different choices. You can set up just simply back-to-back -back multiple uh, shareable content objects, which is what a published Captivate course is. So, you know, be SCO1, SCO2, SCO3, SCO4, and so on. Then you can also do uh, what they call simple remediation, where you have modules and individual SCOs would make up those modules with a uh, a post-test as well. And each of these, of course, could contain as many smallable chunks. And this is actually a good way to go if you want to recycle a lot of information. Some, some uh, instructional designers like to do this where all of their course material is just simply made up of really tiny uh, pieces of information. And then, of course, they could build their curriculum or build an entirely new curriculum. And if you need, let's say, um, you know, one or two small learning objects, if you will, from that first curriculum in the second, it's real easy to just grab those and include those as part of your curriculum without redesigning the whole course. And then, of course, there's a version which includes pre-tests and post-tests as well. I've got nothing that elaborate at this point for the purpose of this demonstration. So I'll just choose the first option and it's real simple. You're going to start off by creating your manifest files. So you just, let's say you have uh, a course code, you know, method that your company uses. You just obviously want to follow that. Come up with a description of this particular SCORM file or what it will be. Uh, you may want to do versioning just to keep track of which version of this course you're doing. You can put duration. I recommend that's a good thing to keep track of. Uh, you know, maybe this is a 10-minute module. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. And then subject could be whatever, um, you know, uh, whatever topic um, or, or subject area within your LMS you're going to use. So once I've got all this filled out, and of course I can choose between SCORM version 1.2 or 2004, um, I believe I published these for 2004, so we'll just uh, leave it at that. And we'll click on, co oh, I'm not using a proper, yeah, it's that little dash there. I shouldn't have had that. So now it's very simple. I have this um, almost like an empty palette, if you will, and uh, I can do a few things. So I can either create a new course. I'm, not, I'm already doing that, so I don't need to do that. And the Publish button, which we'll use in a moment, is located here. So here's the structure. I can change the title if I want at this point. 
I can check off whether I need to force the module sequence. Um, I'm not a fan of that. I personally like people or, or like giving people the opportunity to finish lesson five first if they want, and then go back to two. I think it's more in in uh, it's more fitting, uh, you know, or, or keeping uh, with uh, adult learning principles. So I'm going to add a file, and you can add anything that is a um, a SCORM file. You can also add PDF files as well. So I'm going to go to the desktop and I'm going to select my module one. We'll open that. It just takes a moment or two as it loads that. It's basically loading the manifest information from that course and building into this. So there's module one. It's represented just as this little bar with the title on it. Now I can add the second module. You know, and if I had more, I certainly could add those one by one. Um, with, with this selected, of course, I can move the selections up and down. So if I've imported them and they're in the wrong order, I could correct that at this point. So now I'm ready to publish this particular uh, SCORM file, or in this case, um, uh, package file, if you will. So I'm just going to click this little Publish Course icon in the top, and you'll get this little pop-up that just you know gives you an opportunity to change the project title if you need to. Uh, I'm not going to publish to my Adobe Captivate Projects folder. Instead, for ease, I'm just going to put it to my desktop, and we'll just hit Publish. And this shouldn't take too long. Yep, not even a few. So they weren't very big modules to begin with. But that's it. So now I have this guy here, which is uh, HR1234, which is the culmination of these two modules put together. Now, at this point, you could upload it to your corporate LMS or your organization's LMS. Um, if you just need to uh, test it, you can use something like SCORM Cloud. Uh, you can get a free account with SCORM Cloud. And I have a free account with SCORM Cloud and um, I have a course that's there right now so because it's a free account I think I can only have one course at a time so I'm just going to delete that first and the great part about SCORM Cloud if you're an instructional designer designing e-learning you should have a SCORM Cloud account whether it's a free one um, or it's the full version uh, because number one it will allow you to test your courses but it's a great way to share your courses with your subject matter experts and your stakeholders for the purposes of sign off and review or review and sign off I guess as the case would be so now I'm gonna select that file and I'm gonna upload it now when you make the multi scope packager file as we've just done uh, it's gonna create sort of um, a hierarchy that your learners can follow, following those models that you saw when we first opened it up. In this case, I just have back-to-back -back SCO files, so you'll just see Module 1 and then Module 2. So it's uploaded that successfully, and we can launch that and just take a look at what that looks like. So you'll see, um, you'll see the two modules here, and I can go through the first one and complete it and we'll just answer the multiple choice question which is that's a one question quiz very easy I've got it correct and this was just something very simple that I created here so that's pretty much it it's just the first module there and what will happen when it has a chance to uh, complete itself it shows that I've completed the first course object title. I would obviously want to give it a proper name. Now I can go in and do the second one by clicking on that again that hierarchy that's off to the left here. Really it's just the same course with a different theme applied to it. Nothing fancy here. And we'll just do this and we'll pass this. We'll do there we go. So I've successfully completed this course and now I've got all check marks there. 
Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, and hopefully PMAC likes it as well, uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up.